Okay, so we're going to look at some graduated cylinders and a few rulers. Just to kind of show you how to make measurements uh, by taking one decimal place or one digit more precise or further than what's printed on the side of the device itself. So these pictures are actually from the worksheet that you get in class, and so they should look familiar to you. But you can kind of take some answers down as we go along. I'm going to move this guy up just a little bit. You can see your numbers at the bottom there are, are 1 through 6 to match the ones that are on your sheet. What I'd like to do is actually start not with number one here, but with one of the middle ones, number two, three, four, five. These are all actually sort of more or less from the, from the same graduated cylinder. And the way you know that is that the major lines that are marked with numbers here are to the nearest 10. So on number two, for example, we have uh, marks here for 30, 40, 50, 60. And for number four, we have marks starting at the very bottom at 0, 10, 20, 30, and so forth. If you look at number one, you can see that it's actually got major markings for every one or to the ones place. And way over here on number six, you've actually got major markings to the nearest tenths place, which is kind of unusual for anything that you'll see in regular chemistry. But it's possible it could be on something like a burette. So as we look at these, middle four then, they're all going to be some, somewhat similar as far as their precision goes because they're all more or less from the same device. If we, if we could imagine these all being a, seg a segment or a vertical section from the same long graduated cylinder, then we'd be making measurements on that one graduated cylinder, and they should be somewhat the same. So what I'd like to show you on here is how we make a measurement then on, say, number two. So if we take a look at number two, this curve, like we mentioned before, is called the meniscus. And if there are water in a graduated cylinder, especially one that's made of glass, you're going to see a meniscus, a curve, because water has what's called adhesive properties or adhesion. The water molecules like to stick to the glass, and so they almost sort of crawl up the sides. We'll talk more about that when we get to bonding and intermolecular forces and something called cohesion and adhesion. It also explains why water droplets are round, or why raindrops are round, and other things too. But for now, let's just take a look at this little curve or meniscus that the water is forming right in here. If you can kind of take a look then, that line is above 40, certainly. It's even above 41. So if you look really closely, this little line here, this one, represents 41 milliliters. We're going to assume this is measuring in milliliters or cubic centimeters. So here's 41, here's 42, here's 43. Now, let's say we're looking at that curve, and we can all agree that it's more than 40. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's 40-something. And that something, it's definitely at least 41. And many of you will look at this and probably say that this line is actually right at or even slightly above the 42 line. Well, let's, let's say we all agree. Now, if you don't, that's okay. We'll talk about you in a second here. Let's say that we all think, well, it's pretty close to 42. And it, you probably even would be comfortable if I gave you this graduated cylinder and said, what's the volume in here? you'd look at it and say, oh, that's about 42 milliliters. And you'd be accurate, but you wouldn't be as precise as you could be. And the reason for that is that the line, this little line, tells you 42. So any old person could look at that and say 42. But we need to be able to go one digit further than that because we need to be more precise. One decimal place more precise than what the device itself tells us. And it tells us 42. They don't mark that little line, but that's what it represents. So you need to go one decimal place further than that. So it's 42 point what? Well, let's say you look at this and said, well, I think it's just a little bit above 42. What you have to do is sort of imagine between 42 and 43, right in here, that there are actually 10 more small spaces in that little gap. Now, that's pretty small. <clears throat> and so you're kind of be estimating it, which is fine. Let's just say I'm going to be right a little bit above it. And so I might say that's 42.1 and you'd be good. That'd be precise enough. You can't go any further than that because then you'd be estimating two decimal places and that's not allowed. You can only estimate one. So I'm going to look at that and say 42.1. Now what if my lab partner comes over here and says, no, 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 no. That's, oops, that's 42, but it's right on the money. So I don't think it's 42.1. I think it's 42.0 and that'd be fine as well. Well, let's say your third lab partner comes along and says, you're both wrong. And this is what I mentioned before, those of you who think that the, it's not even up to the 42 line yet. So let's erase that whole thing. And let's say, well, I'm a third person. I'm going to come along and say, you know, from my perspective, it's actually a little bit under the 42 line. And so I'm going to say it's only 41 point something. And I'm going to say that something is 9, so 41.9. So that's three different measurements, and you could actually be even a little bit more or less than that. Um, and probably still be okay. But if I would said 41.9, and someone else in my group thought it was exactly 42, and a third person said 42.1, well, we're all being accurate, because those are all reasonably close. We're all being the equal, uh, we're all being equally precise, which is to one decimal place, to the tenths place. 
and we'd all be fine. These would all be our correct answers. You could write those down on your on your lab table or on a sheet like this, and you'd be perfectly fine. Now, if you said 43.1, you'd be precise the way you should be, but you wouldn't be accurate because this isn't up to 43. And again, we always want to read, like I said before, the bottom of this curve, right at the lowest point. You can't read 43 be way up here. It's nowhere near that high. So if you were to say 43.1, your precision is good, but your accuracy is actually way off. If you were to say 41.1, again, your accuracy is off. If you were to say 42.15, you're accurate, but you're being actually more precise than you're allowed to be. And sometimes that sounds a little weird. Shouldn't we be as precise as we absolutely can? Well, you are when you only have one decimal place here because that's all this allows. If I take a look at number three, I'm going to clear out some of these other measurements just so I don't have all three. You only need one answer, not all the possible answers. So really any of these would be all right. And they'd be just as correct on a quiz or anything else too. If I were to look at number three, I'm above the 50, 50, this is 55, 56, 57, 58, 59. I'd say I'm between 58 and 59. And probably so would you. So this is 58 point something. And that something is up to you to decide. Maybe I look at that and say, mm, it's just about half, maybe not quite, so I'll say 58.4. Maybe you say it's 58.3 or 58.5 or something else, but it's going to be 58 point something. If we take a look over here at number one real quick, we can tell it's above 12, but this line then is not 13 because 13 is way up here, right? So if you can imagine that this line is 12.1, 12.2, 12.3, 12 12.4, 12 and so on, then this line this big one actually is 12.0. Think about it, right? So that's 12.0. This one's 12.1, 12.2. So if I were to look at this, I would say it's above 12.1, which is this little guy right here, but it's not quite to 12.2, which is this one right here. And so it's between 12.1 and 12.2. I'm going to say it's 12.1 something. And again, that something is for you to decide or for your partners to decide on their own. I'm going to say it's just a little bit above 12.1, maybe not quite as little as it might be, so I'm going to say it's 12.1 and two hundredths, okay, right a little bit above. Maybe you say it's 12.11 or 12.13 or even 12.10. You'd want to have two decimal places because the lines themselves, as I sort of indicate here, the lines themselves represent the tenths place, 12.1, 12.2 on that device. And lastly, one more example, number six, is to look at this and say, okay, this is 1.2, this is 1.3, this is actually even one more degree precise. So this is 1.20, this is 1.30. They don't print that onto a graduated cylinder because it's sort of, uh, I guess, understood or maybe just cluttered up or something if you add that. But that's what it is. And it's important to recognize that because that means for us that this little mark, which we're right above with our meniscus here, is actually about 1.2 eight if you count up to it. So this is 1.28 something and that something is again your estimate. So I'm going to say it's more than halfway up. It's about 1.287. Then you might say 286 or 285 or 288 and you'd be all in the same neighborhood at equally precise and just as accurate and good. So what I'd like you to do is finish up the rest of that front page if you haven't already done that and uh, go on to the back and try some of those too. It's quite simpler on the back actually if we take a look at that because on the back side there aren't any meniscus uh, to deal with on each problem and that helps us out just a little bit. So I guess I'll do one, one quick example with you on the back. Uh, if we take a look at the first ruler at the top, uh, this could be a ruler or a meter stick. It could also be a thermometer if there were a liquid inside to show us the, the temperature. But it would be the same, more or less the same phenomenon. So if I were to look say at position C on this page, you may be a little closer on yours because your, your page is uh, right in front of you than I can with the screen here. But we take a look at where position C is, it's above 56 and maybe not quite to 57. Hopefully you see it that way too. So if that's the case, 56 but not quite 57 means that for position C it's 56 point something. And that something is, well, between, let's say, a little more than halfway and not quite all the way to 57. So I'm going to call that about 56.8. And again, if you said that was 56.5 or 6 or 7 or 8 or 9, maybe even you see that because your copy's a little more blurry or off than mine, maybe you're seeing it as 57.0. As long as you have one decimal place and you're in the neighborhood of about 56 to 57, you're doing fine. Uh, now, with, with those few examples in mind, take a few minutes and work on the others on this page as you get it. If I've already handed it out to you, get right to it. If you haven't, hopefully you can come back to these examples and uh, jump right into the page 
tomorrow. Today's discussion of observations, interpretations, and measurements are brought to you by Diet Cherry 7-Up. Refreshing, crisp, hard to beat by Townhouse Flipsides Crackers. When crackers and pretzels alone aren't enough. And Easy Cheese, the American version. Guaranteed never to spoil.